Have you ever wondered how to make a concrete specification? I'm going to teach you how to do it today. My name is Tyler Lay, and my dream job is to be mayor of concrete land. So how do you make a concrete specification? Well, there's two steps. The first, you have to determine what properties do you really need that concrete to have? The second, how do we ensure that we're going to get these properties? Be careful what you ask for, because you just might get it. Be careful, just ask for what you need. As your asks or demands go up, your challenges are gonna go up as well. It's gonna be harder to get that in your concrete and people are more likely to make mistakes. Also, as risk goes up, as you ask contractors to do something they're not comfortable with, or they've never done before, then your price will also go up. So all of this must be balanced. But how do you get the properties? Well, you have to measure and pay for them. Two different things. Measure what's important and also reward people once they give that to you. You need to choose your acceptance limits carefully. A lot of engineers like to decide, man, I want the best. I want the greatest there is. Do you really need that? Just ask for what you need and you're gonna get for what you test and pay for. And you shouldn't expect to get any more or less. Pure performance-based specifications are extremely rare. Most modern specifications, progressive ones at least, are hybrids. Hybrid, what do I mean by that? Well, I'm not talking about a car. A hybrid's a car, right? That runs off of electricity and also gas, right? I'm talking about something a little bit different. I'm talking about prescriptive specifications or specifications that give very detailed requirements that must be met. Performance specifications ask for just what you need, right? A long lasting structure with no maintenance. How do I do this? Well, the idea is that you blend them. You put them in a bowl and you blend them up and you get something great in the end. A hybrid. It's not performance, it's not prescriptive, it's both. It takes the best of both specifications. Some requirements absolutely must be met, but then we're gonna sample the concrete during construction and we're gonna measure what we need, the tests that tell us what we need. So what do we really want from our concrete? I think that's an important question. And I think we need constructible concrete that's strong enough, that's durable, and then occasionally I may need some special properties like skid resistance or super flat, or maybe I want it to be green. Why not make the color green or you can make it sustainable. That may be a, some kind of special property, but different elements need different things. Different concretes for different applications need different things. What I'm talking about here. Well, I'm showing first a slip form paver, and this is a machine that comes along and it makes concrete like extrudes it. And the concrete's supposed to stand up on its own. Doesn't need any form. This is a very, very stiff mixture that the, that the machine like <laughs> vibrates and puts it in place. Then down here we have flowable concrete, concrete that needs to be pumped. This is slab on grade where they're pumping the concrete and directing it where it needs to go. They'll come back and screed it, do everything else after that. The concrete that's pumpable is very different than the concrete that goes in the slip form paver. And then over here on the right, we have this concrete with extremely dense reinforcement. Look how close it is. Like they like to say that if a bird happened to fly in there, it would die. Oh my poor bird. It wouldn't make it out because the caves, this reinforcing are so tight together. And to fill that up, you need an extremely flowable concrete with very small aggregate that you don't want to consolidate, that you want to consolidate itself. These are three totally different concretes that require three totally different designs. So concrete must be designed for the application, but also for the equipment and the expertise of the contractor. That's really important.
A lot of times, people like to talk about the slump test. This test is pretty cool, developed by a guy named Duff Abrams, God bless Duff Abrams, in 1911. Ha! He had this steel mold that filled up in a constant manner. You pulled it off and you measure how far it fell down. This is a widely used test, very commonly used, and some people even like to specify it. So what does that test tell you? Well, it really tells you that when you, when you pull up the mold, how far does the concrete drop? That's what it tells you. It doesn't tell you about pumping. It doesn't tell you about if it's gonna fill in the rebar. It doesn't gonna tell you if it's gonna work well on a slip form pavement. It was designed to be a consistency test. Tell you load to load how the concrete changes. So do we really care? Do we really, in our hearts, care what the slump of the concrete is? I don't. So do we need this in our specification? I don't think we do. Why don't we tell them what we need? Why don't we tell them how flat we want the concrete, what the finish of it is, maybe what the slope is, maybe some other important criteria. And let's not tell people how to get there. Let's tell them what we want and let's let them tell us how they're gonna get it. And we can use the slump to measure consistency. Are they doing it consistently? Are they providing me a consistent product? That's great to measure. So what strength do we really need? Oh, people in the concrete industry are obsessed with strength. They love to talk about strength with one another and they brag about it. They say, oh, my concrete's 6,000 PSI. Oh, my concrete's 8,000 PSI. Who cares? Strength is somewhat important. You need to have some, but we already have safety factors on it. So why do we think that more strength is better? Why do we think that's helpful? And there's a great quote out there by Arver Grant. He says, strength is essential, but otherwise unimportant. And what Arvid means here is that you gotta have strength, but a little bit more doesn't do you any good. It doesn't do you any good. So just ask for what you need, just what you need and don't worry about getting more. Most applications, most concrete applications do not require high strength. If you do, great, ask for it. But if you don't need it, don't ask for it. It's just something else. Do we really need strength at 28 days? You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. The building code says that I have to have strength at 28 days. Is that true? What if you got it at 29? What if you got it at 30? What if you got it at 90? As long as you get it, isn't that okay? What if we had a design strength at some far day out there, something like 56 days, give the concrete plenty of time to get there, let people get innovative in what concrete they might put together. So strength isn't as important, but allow them to pay the contractors early as long as the strength is on track as long as it looks like it's gonna make it. What do I mean? I've got a graph at the bottom where I'm showing time on the x-axis and I'm showing strength on the y-axis. We've got these concretes that are getting stronger, getting stronger, and getting stronger. And as long as at 56 days or 90 or whatever, we meet some minimum criteria, shouldn't we be happy? And couldn't we, if we were on track, if we knew what this track was gonna look like with this curve was gonna look like. If I got that at seven, wouldn't we be okay paying some part of the cost? Because if we get there at seven, we're, we're likely, highly likely to get there at 56 or whatever the day is down the road. The idea here is being innovative, trying to give people an option to not make these things as important. And high early strength isn't good for our concrete. If you tell someone you want 6,000 or 7,000 PSI, they wanna get it for you as fast as you can. If you go to a restaurant and you order a food, what do they try to do? They try to get it to you as fast as you can. Do you really need it that fast? Why don't you just tell them, you know, I want some strength, but we can wait on it. I don't need it right away because early age strength isn't good for our concrete. And extra strength means extra binder, which means extra money, also means extra shrinkage, extra cracking, and other durability problems. People are great at getting strength, but why? Because we specify it. 
we test for it, and we pay on it. That's a big deal, but most structures are taken out of service not because of strength, but because of durability problems. Why don't we specify pay and test for durability? Durability is making our structures last for a long time with as little maintenance as possible. And in my opinion, this should be the goal of every owner, every designer, and every contractor out there. This is what you should be shooting for. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. Leave me a thumbs up or a comment if you like this video. Take care and don't forget to click the bell. The bell! The bell will help you keep informed when new videos are coming out for me. Take care, everybody. Bye, Concrete Land.